Guys, what's your favorite type of muffin? Now forget that because I think this carrot cake muffin with cream cheese, chocolate chips, and a streusel topping, it's gonna change your mind. Let's make it. I actually got you guys to vote and it was very close, but the carrot cake muffins won, so here we go. I'm gonna start by shredding up my carrots because I need them to have an opportunity to dry out a little bit. So we need them peeled and shredded. Voila, this is about two cups of shredded carrots. I'm gonna chop them up a little bit. I don't want any big chunkos in there. It doesn't have to be perfect, just a coarse chop. That'll do. I've lined this baking sheet with some paper towel and I'm just gonna toss it on and then pat it down just to dry out the carrots before we add it to the batter. On. I wanna control the liquid in our bake. And with these little guys, we just don't know. Wait your turn. Now let's do our streusel topping. You don't have to do this part, but it makes your muffins better. I'm not gonna make too much of it. I'm not gonna go crazy, but just a little bit. That's all you need. A quarter cup of butter. Melted. A half cup of flour. In. A third cup of sugar. You could use brown sugar if you wanted to. In. Some cinnamon, of course. Just a quarter teaspoon. In. A bit more salt. I used salted butter, so I'm just gonna add a pinch. In. Give it a mix. It should clump up nicely. It should go from this to this. Stunning. If yours doesn't look like this, if it's too wet, add more flour. If it's too dry, add more butter. This is not rocket science. It's just butter, sugar, deliciousness. <laughs> Wait your turn. Okay, onto the muffins. Dry ingredients together first. Two cups of flour. One, two, in. One teaspoon of baking soda. In. It's a half teaspoon. Are you all right? <laughs> Sorry about that. Just a half teaspoon of baking powder. That was hectic. In. Careful with that one. Half teaspoon of salt. In. One and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. One. And a half in quarter teaspoon of ground ginger in quarter teaspoon of nutmeg in it's like a one eighth teaspoon of clove. I find this pretty strong in give it a mix. Oops, I meant to sift this. We will do that in a second. Let's do our wet ingredients first and the sugar right in this bow. I like to use oil and muffins. It keeps them nice and soft. You can use whatever oil you like, but vegetable oil or canola oil work the best. And we need a half cup in. And then a third cup of another liquid ingredient. I'm gonna use lactose-free yogurt, but you could use applesauce, sour cream. You could use melted butter if you wanted. One third of a cup though, in. A bit of vanilla, like a teaspoon or two. Measure with your heart, in. And three large room temperature eggs. Please rate this crack. In. I've got it, I've got it. We use room temperature eggs so that it can incorporate easy and the rise will be more even. In. Give it a mix just to combine this a little bit and then we'll add our sugar. We need one cup of sugar total and I'm gonna do a half cup of brown sugar. In. And a half cup of white sugar, but if you only have one or the other, just use that. In. Mix. Stunning. Doesn't take much. Be back for you in a jiff. Sift this dry ingredients just to be safe. In. Shake. Now we gotta add back in our dried carrots. In. They go in. Almost. <laughs> in. Quick little mix. So here's the important part when you're making any type of muffin. Once we add this wet ingredients back in, we wanna mix as little as possible. As soon as you see the flour has kind of disappeared, we stop mixing. In. Give it a mix and just use your spatula. It should go from this to this. Absolutely stunning. It should be not too thick, not too thin. Just like that. Enough for 12 muffins lined. And then we want to fill these three quarters full, almost to the top. When you do this part, try to be neat. That's rich coming from me, but you don't really want to spill around the edges because that stops the muffins from rising as well. In. See? Almost all the way full. Fill them up. <laughs> I definitely made a mess and I just cleaned it up with some paper towel. The last step is our streusel topping. This was in the fridge while I made the rest of it. As much as you like right on top. On. You guys just gonna let me forget the cream cheese chips like that? Oh well, I don't really mind. These are gonna be fire anyway, but if you wanna add the cream cheese chips or even that cream cheese icing into the center of these, that would be amazing too. Clean it off. Guys, how good do these look? Mm. My oven preheated to 375. These are gonna go in for 18 to 20 minutes. Keep an eye on them. You want a toothpick to come out clean at the end. Go in. Middle rack. In. Ba -ba -da -da. Guys, these are absolutely stunning. It smells like heaven in here. 
I assume this is what heaven smells like. A toothpick check. Oh yeah, nice and clean. A quick tip for you is when you bring out any type of cake from the oven, don't just bring it out and slap it in a cool environment. Bring it out and just put it on the edge or on your oven door where it's still a little bit warm and just let them cool down slowly so that you don't lose the rise of your muffin. Shall we give them a try? The one that we toothpicked perhaps. I'm nervous. Steaming up. Down the middle. <gasps> Guys, I think this might be perfect. Perfect. I'll try this side and Quinn can try that side. Down the edge. Mmm. They're really good. Mmm. It's moist and fluffy in the center, but just dense enough. You still want your carrot cakes to be a little bit dense. And then that streusel topping gives it a nice little crunch. Mmm. Quinn, come try this. It smells good, eh? It smells amazing. Come on. What we got? Carrot cake muffins with a streusel topping. You can try that half. Streusel topping, eh? Nice crunchy streusel top. For more of a... What are you even gonna say? Cream cheese. You're lactose intolerant. <laughs> wow. Out of 10? Very good. Nine, seven. <laughs> That's all we need. It's a good rating. <laughs> I'll take that rating. Make sure you take your muffins out right away so that they don't continue to cook. Here's the recipe for you guys. Let me know if you try it. And happy Friday! You made it to the weekend. You're welcome. Guys, I don't wanna call you out, but whenever you make chicken, do you make it the exact same way every time? I have a tendency to do just that, so now I'm on a mission to make chicken fun again. Today we're gonna to make Moroccan-inspired chicken. Let's do it. We're gonna make it with turmeric, basmati rice, and some vegetables, but we have to start with the marinade, so wait your turn. Easiest way to marinate your chicken, Ziploc. <laughs> it's loud. You wanna have leftovers, so I'm gonna do, whoa, I have 10 chicken legs. Ten chicken legs. In. In. Building a marinade... Well, not you. Building a marinade should always be a choose-your-own-adventure situation. If you don't have everything that I have to put in your marinade, don't worry about it. Just add what you like. In. I'm gonna do one full lemon. In. A couple tablespoons of olive oil. In. I like garlic, so a whole bunch of garlic. About six cloves. <laughs> Minced. <laughs> In. We have our fat with the oil. We have our acid with the lemon juice, which will help penetrate into the chicken. Not a good enough reason to use the word penetrate. And now we're just building our flavors. I'm gonna add like a big tablespoon of cumin. You know what? I'll just measure for you guys. You guys can just half this recipe if you have less legs. <laughs> tablespoon and a half of cumin. In. Two tablespoons of turmeric. One, two. In. It smells so good already. Two tablespoons of dried oregano. One, two, in. A whole bunch of salt and pepper. This one I'm not measuring, but season well. Salt, in. You can just stop there if you want. This is a departure from the Moroccan style chicken for me, but we used this Sandro hot jalapeno tapenade yesterday in our pasta, and it was amazing and super spicy. Like a little teaspoon of that. We like our stuff spicy. In. Maybe two. In. Yum. Now just massage everything together so that it's kind of evenly coated if you can. With love. Guys, these look and smell amazing already. Have a look. Got the blanket. Ooh, baby. How good. I like using Ziplocs for this very reason because you can kind of push all the air out and make sure everything's nice and tightly packed together so that chicken gets as much flavor as possible in there. You see how it's like suction cupped? That's what we want. Now I'm just gonna put this in the fridge for a few hours to marinate until we cook it later, but whatever time you have, use that. It's fine, it's still gonna taste amazing, and overnight is great. Yo, in. Rest well. I'm gonna keep this to one video, so while we wait for that to marinate, I'm going to prep all our veggies and rice and all that stuff we need. One moment. We're making a lot of chicken, so let's make a lot of rice to go with it. Oh. Oops, two cups of basmati rice. In. I'm just prepping, we don't need you yet. I'm gonna use baby buzz to do the onions and garlic. This is my new favorite thing. I have two baby onions, you could use one big one. 
and I came prepared with my damp paper towel this time. And four cloves of garlic. In. Buzz. That's good. My life was so much harder before. Yeah. Gotta take this part out. You can't get to me. You also need to wait your turn. In. You're trying their hardest. Wait your turn. This is random, but I have a tomato to use, so I'm gonna add one diced tomato to the bottom of my rice. Whoa. Whoa, you guys, it's starting to snow. Here it comes. We needed some. Someone asked me what this is. It's technically called a bench scraper. But I did link the set that I got on my Amazon storefront if you want to go check it out. In. Wait. I'm going to prep some green onions for the razzle dazzle. Oh. The same thing with some coriander. If you have dried coriander, actually, add that to the um, marinade that we made as well. I don't have any, so we're just going to go extra on the fresh. Chop it up a bit. Don't add the fresh coriander to the marinade though because we're gonna sear the chicken and when you cook fresh herbs on a high temperature, they tend to get really bitter. So we'll just add it after. Just like those tips or you just like keep cooking, Belle. Wait, your turn. Guys, look at it now. Whoa. Okay, the last thing we need for the rice is a tablespoon of turmeric. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you guys like my apron? I just made Quinn some pasta, so. I put this on to protect my new shirt. What do you think? In. Bit of salt. In. And if you have ground coriander, add a little bit of that too, like a teaspoon. Okay guys, it's been a few hours. We're all ready with our mise en place. Mise en place? <laughs> mise en place. Mm. You guys let me know. Have a look. Rice, spices, tomatoes, garlic and onions, coriander and razzle dazzle, green onions. Bring them out, bring them out. Our chicken's ready as well. Ready as it's gonna be anyway. Come over here. Right, I've got olive oil warming up in a cast iron skillet. Fresh plate for when the chicken's done. And we're just gonna drop them in one by one and we're gonna give each side a nice sear. In. Ooh, they all fit. Fire it up. Give them a flip. Guys, look at this. Don't in. Don't move your chicken. It's gonna continue to cook in the rice layer, so don't worry. You just wanna get that nice sear and lock in all that flavor and juice. Here we go, here we go. Into the same pan, just a little bit of your chicken stock to deglaze it. Then add your onions and garlic. Then they should go from, from this to this. Add the turmeric and the salt. In tomatoes. In. I'm just gonna let those cook down into a bit of a sauce. From this this. Now go in with your two cups of rice in. As that starts to come to a boil, just place your chicken back on top in. Just slide that. Have a look. Stone in. And then just cover. I don't want to burn the rice, so I'm going to put this in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. <laughs> go in. in. Took it out of the oven, but I haven't looked yet. Thank you. Jumping in hot. Put you up higher so you can see. I really hope all the liquid's gone. Oh, it's stone in. Guys, I think this might be perfect. perfect. Nailed it! I cannot tell you how good this smells. This would be perfect for a big dinner party just to put in the middle of the table and everyone digs in and then you can get creative with all the other little sides. I'm actually not eating dinner here tonight. I have a movie screening to go to. You guys are gonna come with me, but I'm gonna dress this up for Quinn on razzle dazzle on. It's so hot right now, but I need to taste it. Let's have some rice at least. Look at that, it's perfectly cooked. Down the edge. Mmm. Hot. It's so good though. It's like a warm hug. It has just enough spice, so much flavor, and the fresh herbs and green onions on top really give it that brightness that you need. Ooh, lime. A couple squeezes of fresh lime on there is gonna push it over the edge for sure. On. Actually, you know what would go really well with this is that jalapeno coriander Greek yogurt dip slash dressing that we made that one time. I might make that when I get home later to try some chicken. Come on. Make sure that it's tender and juicy. Mmm. It's perfect. Perfect. This is definitely one way to spice up your chicken. Happy Thursday, everybody. You're welcome. Guys, this is the recipe of the green drink that absolutely changed my life. I've shown it to you guys many times before and I'll show it to you again. But just in case you haven't seen it, let's make it. 
a good blender is key, trust me. It's just five ingredients, super easy, and then a little bit of water. And I know what you guys are gonna ask next. What does it do for you? Well, it's really good for your skin. It's really good for your hair, just getting all those nutrients in your body in the morning. But because it's a green drink and not a green juice, we leave all the fiber in it. And most people, not most people, but the nutrient that most of us are deficient in is fiber. And so it keeps you very regular and it's great for your digestive system. In, whoop, almost. So far we put two stalks of celery, one green apple. We need one cup of spinach or a big old handful in one full cucumber. Did you guys know that cucumber is 98% water? So if you're not a real cucumber fan, just add a bunch more water. But I think that the cucumber gives it a nice cooling effect. I like it. Get off, in. This is a big cucumber. This is gonna make a big juice, that's good. In. Almost. And then the key to making this actually taste good is adding some acid. I like to use lime, but you could use lemon instead if you wanted. But you want a good squeeze of a half of a lemon or a lime. In. And then just about a half cup of water. In. The thing about drinking something like this with a lot of fiber in it in the morning means that your body already starts working hard digesting the food. So when you do put sugar or a simple carbohydrate in your body, your body's prepared and you won't get that sugar high and then the crash after. Blend. <laughs> Not plugged in, one moment. Right, sorry about that. Also, if you do the blender dance while you do this, it makes it taste better, just so you know. Blend. <laughs> Even if you have seen this recipe before, this is a little reminder to do those little things that you know are good for you, but are sometimes hard. Pick up the cube in. Maybe not hard, but hard to be consistent with. And then once you start again, you're reminded that it is easy for you to do. And it makes you feel so good, feel so good. In. Guys, I think this might be perfect. Perfect. And that's it. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I hope you do something that makes you feel good today. You deserve it. Mm. You're welcome. Guys, in my opinion, the best part about anything red velvet is the cream cheese frosting. In the last video, we're making red velvet white chocolate chunk cookies, which are amazing. But now we have to make the cream cheese frosting. It's pretty simple, but just in case you need to know, this is how you do it. A simple life skill we should all have. Start with the butter and the cream cheese. We need three tablespoons of softened butter in. About a half a brick of cream cheese. Maybe a little less, just because we're only making these for cookies. In. <laughs> now whip that up until it's nice and fluffy. It should go from this to this. Add a spot of vanilla, like a teaspoon. Measure with your heart. In. And then just add your sugar, one cup of powdered sugar. In. That's all you need. Give it a mix. It should go from this to this. Yum, guys. I think this might be perfect. Perfect. Now just grab a mason jar or a big cup and a piping bag or a Ziploc. Both work the same. And fold it over and just dump it in. In. And use the edges to scrape. That was even smoother than it usually goes, I'll be honest. In. That's all you need. This is the perfect cream cheese frosting recipe, especially for cookies. I'll leave it right there for you. Now you know. Now go watch the cookie video to see this stuff in action. You're welcome. Guys, does anyone else feel like the idea of Valentine's Day is a little bit weird? I feel like every day should be a reason to show our love, but if we have to pick a specific day, it feels like a good reason to make red velvet white chocolate chip cookies with a cream cheese frosting. Let's do it. These are gonna be so good. The color of red velvet traditionally came from like a raw cocoa and its reaction between a buttermilk or another acid like vinegar. But today we're gonna use red food coloring. It's a bit easier. I am gonna use our KitchenAid today, but you don't have to. We often make cookies together by hand. Let's measure out all the dry ingredients first so we're ready. This recipe still has cocoa in it, it's just not the raw cocoa that they used to use. I need one quarter cup. And I'm gonna sift this so we don't have any chunkos. In, break. Oh, careful. Stunning. Mm. Two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. One. Careful. The counter is clean. In. Right. Two. In. And a quarter. 
in. One teaspoon of baking soda, in. And a half teaspoon of baking powder. And right in the bowl, in. I always use salted butter, so I just add a pinch of salt, in. But if you're not using salted butter, then add a quarter teaspoon of salt. Mix. Stunning. Have a look. It looks like chocolatey flour. It's your turn. Now let's do our butter and our sugar. We need three quarter cups of butter. <coughs> I don't need that. Softened. Just like that. Go in intervals of five seconds. You can't go wrong. In. Equal parts of our sugar. So three quarter cups of white sugar. One, two, three. In. And the same amount of light brown sugar. One, two, three quarter. In. Bring them out. Bring them out. Paddle attachments just fine. Give it a mix until light and fluffy. That's good. Have a look. It should go from this to this. Yum. Now two eggs, room temperature if you can. Please rate this crack. In. Pretty good. A couple teaspoons of vanilla, a measure with your heart ingredient. In. And now our food coloring. If you have the gel kind, I wish I could find it. I couldn't though. You only need a teaspoon of it, but if you have the liquidy kind, then you need a whole tablespoon or maybe just under a tablespoon of red food coloring. That feels like so much. In. We're good. We're good. Your turn again. Give it a mix. It should go from this to this. I'm from scary to sweet and pink. It reminds me of the transition from a teenager to an adult. You know what I mean? Thank you for waiting. Put in your dry ingredients. In. Give it a mix until just combined. It should go from this to this. Absolutely stunning. Now we just need our chocolate. You don't want to do too much chocolate because we're going to do that cream cheese frosting on top, remember? So I'm going to do 150 grams of white chocolate chunks. Don't need that bit. Whoa. <laughs> in. One more little mix. Done. Because of all the food coloring in here, this dough is slightly stickier than our regular cookie dough. I'm going to put it in the fridge for half an hour before we make it into bowls. A second for you, a half an hour for me. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. The dough is nice and chilled now. We just have to turn these into nice large balls. Just like that. I'll tell you how many this makes. All right, I got 20 bowls out of that, but it just depends on how big you make them. Line your sheet pan with parchment paper and load them up. All right, these are gonna go in at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. Keep an eye on them. Yo, in. Cookies are the best because they don't take too long. All right, I'll be right back with cookies. <gasps> Look at these. I know they're not bright red, but that kind of creeps me out anyway. I think these might be perfect. Perfect. Stunning, come on. In the video right after this one, I show you how to make this super easy cream cheese frosting. And I'm gonna try to frost little hearts in the middle of these. How cute that is. That is how I show my love for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Cream cheese icing is so good. All right guys, the recipe's right here. Let me know what you're gonna do for Valentine's Day. I'm gonna do two more and then I'm gonna show you what I bought to box them up in. Wow, I got exponentially better at that. I've been wrapping my cookies in tin foil, so look what I bought in. Look at this. So cute, and I'm just gonna sprinkle a few of these cookie crumbs on top. It's for the vibes, optional. <laughs> wow. I think we absolutely nailed it. Happy Valentine's Day. You're welcome. Guys, have you ever wondered if lactose-free butter would brown? The answer is no. <laughs> My mother-in-law is even more lactose intolerant than Quinn, and so I'm making her a special birthday recipe, but we can't make it with brown butter. I did, however, get 70% cocoa chocolate, and I think she's gonna really like that. Let's make lactose-free cookies. I'm gonna have to look up the science behind that butter. I knew that browning butter was browning the milk solids in the butter. I don't know what I thought would happen, but I thought it would work with lactose-free too. I just went out specially to get this lactose-free butter, and now I'm scared I ruined it. We'll see if this works. In. One cup of lactose-free butter. Just soften your butter, it'll be easier. Add in your sugar. I'm gonna do one cup of white sugar. In. One cup of brown sugar. In. Give it a mix. It should go from this to this. Stunning. Two eggs. <laughs> Please rate this crack. In. I thought I got shell in, but I didn't. I don't know why I second guess myself. We need a couple teaspoons of vanilla. Measure with your heart. 
in. Give it a mix. It should go from this to this. Remember not to overwork the cookies after you add the eggs. It'll make them stiff. But look at that, so smooth. Now three cups of all-purpose flour. Remember to spoon level your flour. So just scoop it in, sprinkle it in, sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. sprinkle. And just with the back of a knife, don't push it down, just kind of chop it so it's even and then scrape it off. And that's how you get a true one cup. Technically, we should all be weighing this with a scale, but this is how you get closest to one. Two. For the same reason, I don't like to add the whole final cup. I'll add like three quarters of it in. I've left some left over just in case it's too dry. Mix. I will add the rest in. It should go from this to this. Okay, I need to go quick and not rush because I forgot the baking soda and baking powder and the salt. So you need one teaspoon of baking soda. I'm gonna try to spread this evenly now in. And a half teaspoon of baking powder in. And just a dash of salt. I actually got dark chocolate with sea salt in it, so I'm not gonna add much salt in. Mix. <laughs> Maybe these are gonna be the best cookies ever, and we just didn't know that we were supposed to make them this way. <laughs> I'm kidding. Make sure that your baking soda and baking powder is evenly dispersed into your flour. Wait your turn. Not to worry, it's a cookie. The chocolate will always save it. Two bars of chocolate. I have one sea salt dark chocolate and one 70% dark chocolate. Chopped. <laughs> just dump it in. In. Almost. Give it a mix. All right, these look stunning. There's the oven timer. I am gonna bake a couple cookies for Kathleen. I'm gonna bake four good sized cookies and then the rest of them I'm gonna put into balls and freeze for her so she can make them whenever she wants. I'm gonna put them in these little bags. I'm gonna put these in at 375 for eight to 10 minutes. Going in. And now let's prep the rest. I'm just gonna roll them into even sized bowls. I like to make sure there's a big chunk of chocolate right on top for the vibes, just like that, a bunch of them. This will make 20 to 24 cookies, depending on how big you make them. They look absolutely stunning. I'm gonna add flaky sea salt on these now before I freeze them so that she doesn't have to do it when she bakes them on. Now we just gotta bag them up. I'm gonna do two cookies per bag in two. Guys, the first batch is done and they came out just fine. I knew they would. Just a sprinkle of salt on there, on. While they're still nice and hot, I'll stick to the chocolate. Let them cool down just a little bit and then transfer them to a rack. Stunning. How stinking cute are these? I'm gonna freeze these now and take them to her later today. And once they've been frozen, uh, the butter is hardened and everything and they won't spread as much. So a lower temperature for a longer time will be perfect. Perfect. I hope she likes this gift. I feel like it's a little more heartfelt than just buying something from a store. We'll see. And I've got these ones all packed up. So at least you can try them first. Here's the recipe, guys. Lactose-free dark chocolate chunk cookies. Delicious. Happy birthday, Kathleen. And to all her friends who watch my TikToks, hopefully she shares with you. I'm sure she will. You're welcome. Guys, my UK followers are gonna think I'm absolutely nuts for this, but we're gonna try to turn a traditional Bakewell tart into a blondie with white chocolate. Do you think we can do it? I think we can. Traditional Bakewell tart is a shortbread crust. It has layers of jam, frangipan, it has an icing sugar top, and then usually a cherry on top. We're gonna skip the cherry, but we're adding white chocolate chunks, so don't worry. This is a bit of an experiment for me, so we'll see how it goes. I have two cups of raspberries, and we're just gonna make our jam first in. Less than a quarter cup of white sugar in. Well, you can make them as sweet as you want. This is gonna go on the stove at a low to medium heat for like three to four minutes until it goes from this to this. I can't decide if I wanna strain the seeds out. I think I'll just leave them for now, and if I change my mind later, I'll strain them out. And we'll just let this cool. Wait your turn. Now let's make our blondie base. We need one cup of butter. <laughs> Melted. Stun in. Add two third cups of white sugar. Two. In. Equal parts of brown sugar, so two third cups of brown sugar. One. Two. In. Put it a mix until completely smooth. It should go from this to this. Now add the eggs. We need three eggs. Please break this crack. In. Am I getting too good at that? It's too easy. In. Fire it up. A teaspoon of vanilla extract. Careful. In. That was almond extract. Did I say that? No. A teaspoon of almond extract and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. In. Give it a mix until smooth again. It should go from this to this. Scrape down your bowl. This should be nice and smooth and creamy. Now our dry ingredients. I'm on a full cup of almond flour. In and one and a half cups of regular all-purpose flour. One and a half in. Teaspoon of cornstarch, 
This keeps things soft. In. Pinch of salt. Just a half teaspoon of baking powder. Not traditional in a brownie, but it feels right. In. Right. Give it a mix. It should go from this to this. Our base is pretty much done and it looks stunning. Whoa. I have flour all over my shirt. Sorry about that. It just needs one last thing. Chocolate. I use 200 gram bars, so 200 grams of white chocolate. <laughs> Chopped. Just toss it in. In. Mix. I wish you guys could smell how good this smells already. Mmm. We're ready. Get your oven preheated to 350. A nine by nine inch pan with parchment paper. You know what's next. Dump it in. <laughs> in. I'm gonna make little wells for my jam, just so I can start off the swirl right. Just like this. I've decided not to take the seeds out of this, but you could dollop this in and now we swirl. From this to this, you guys. <laughs> this looks so damn good. Come on. I can't quite use all the jam, but don't worry, it won't go to waste. In. Just to add a little textural crunch to this, I'm gonna top it with some flaked almonds on. Absolutely stunning. This is ready to go in. So 350 for about half an hour. But keep checking on it after 25 minutes. Everyone's oven's different. You want a little jiggle in the middle, but not too much. Get going. In. Wish them luck. I wanna do a little icing sugar drizzle on top. A half cup of powdered sugar or icing sugar, same thing. In. Up to two tablespoons of water, in. And just a dash of almond extract, in. Give it a mix. From this to this. I just did one tablespoon of water and it's the perfect consistency. Wait your turn. And we have to wait our turn. Half an hour is so long. That's why I like cookies. It's much quicker. I'll be right back with Bakewell Blondies. Guys, I think these might be perfect. Perfect. Have to take a look inside, that's the real test. Should come right out, yep. Absolutely stunning. Now the easy part, we gotta cut them up. I think this might be some of my best work yet. Have a closer look. Look, we have perfect ribbons of tart raspberry jam, and then the blondie part set up perfectly. We've gotta try it. I'm gonna cut this one in half, and then Quinn's gonna try the other half, but me first. Are you ready? Down the edge. They're so good. I'm shook. These take me back to my childhood. They taste exactly like a Bakewell. <gasps> we didn't put our sugar on top. Mm. I'm just gonna drizzle it. I gotta get it on this bite for myself. Now down the hatch. It's a Bakewell in a bar. I'm happy. Let me put this on the rest. Have a look. Shine bright, shine far, shine your star. I am biased, but these are the best things I've ever baked, in my opinion. UK friends, try this recipe and tell me if they taste like a traditional Bakewell. I honestly think they do. Quinn, can you come try this other piece and give us a rating, please? I've packed them up and labeled them, ready for everyone to take home. I'm very excited for everyone to try these. Quinn, what are you waiting for? The ice to freeze. Here he comes. This is a Bakewell blondie. Bakewell? Get in, get in frame. Whoa. Out of 10? Come on, soak in those flavors. It's really good. <laughs> Come on. You said 9-8. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'll take it. Try this recipe, please. You're welcome.